The Stryker Rejuvenant and ABG2 hip implant failures are much, much worse for the patient than any hip implant failure in the past. The reason is that the part of the device that's failing is the femoral stem. That's the part that goes down into the femur. It's designed by the company to become a permanent part of the patient's body. It has a porous coating on the outside of it so that once it's driven down into the femur, the bone grows into it. I've had a doctor tell me that getting it out of a patient once the bone's grown into the femoral component is like trying to get a one inch piece of rebar out of a slab of concrete. All of the other hip implant failures that people have heard about in the past, the sulcer cup, the zimmerdurum cup, the trident bearing surface, and even the metal on metal devices, that was all the cup and the ball part that failed. So when the patient had to be revised, the doctor would open them up, take the cup out, take the ball off, put a new cup in, put a new ball on, put them back together and they were fine, relatively speaking. The striker hip failure is so much worse for the patient because not only do they have this metallosis component going on, which some of those other hip failures didn't have, so that's worse in and of itself, significantly worse. You got cobalt circulating through your system, which has all kinds of bugaboos associated with it. You got tissue destruction in your hip, and now when the doctor has to go in there to fix that, he's got to get that piece of rebar out of that slab of concrete. So it can be very, very morbid. It can, you can fracture during surgery. Some doctors have to create a fracture just to get it out. Doctors don't do that surgery very much, so it's intimidating to them. Um, so this is a significantly worse failure than all of the other ones that we've known about, say, in the last 12 years.